That's gonna be really loud on the video. Just like right next to my little corner. Hello world. Alright guys, so uh my character did this. So we're gonna start out with uh just some of our kind of uh basic concepts we're talking about when we essentially work on in that world, right? So start with position. Uh when I'm standing against my opponent, I would argue that most of the time, if one person loses the stand-up fight, like the majority of the time, it's because they lost the initial grip fight. Okay? There's two major ways that happens. One is he gets a really good grip on me, so whatever it is, like they got really fake, they have the sleeve. He's got really good grips, and now I'm reacting to these grips from a negative situation. Or what's happened is I've allowed him to get grips while I also got grips, and you engage in what I generally speaking call the lobster fight, right? where you have two people that are just clawed onto each other, and they're like... And if you see white belt tournaments, you see this situation happen all the time. Like, these two guys are, you know, horns locked, just, ugh, nothing's happening, okay? So I want to utilize my grip fighting, I want to use utilize my positioning to... I don't know why I have three fingers on Put that one away for a different time, a different look. Um, I want to utilize my grip fighting and my positioning to prevent him from getting meaningful grips on me. And that's going to allow me to have the opportunity to get meaningful grips on him without it becoming, again, like the lobster fight, right? So let's talk about position. Well, for I think most of you guys have probably done it, at least I know you, you know, but when I'm in my stand-up situation, I want my positioning to be approximately, like, I want my hips to be on my shoulders, I want good posture. I want my feet to be a roughly shoulder width distance, and I want this uh, one of my feet staggered back. If you have uh, like a history doing stand up, you'll likely want your left foot forward. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you feel more natural with your right foot forward, that's cool too. I would just say if you if you want to connect the two, it, that's a logical decision. To make. But otherwise, say your right foot forward. You have your uh, hip behind your shoulders. Good posture, so I'm not hunched down looking down. I'm here. I have a slight bend in my knee. Okay? My footwork, I never want to cross my feet. Okay? This is how you get tripped up. Anytime I make a step, I open and I close. Open and I close. I can rotate, but I want to open, I want to close, and so on. I want to keep my hands kind of out of range of my opponent. It's going to be important in a minute. Uh, think of it like, you know, he's 5 0 and he's just caught me with the lead. I'm like, ah, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. So I want to keep my hands up. This is just keeping me a little out of range, right? So if we're here, he's trying to grab a hold of me. It's just he has to reach a little bit farther to get a hold of any of these sleeves, okay? I just kind of keep my hands up. This is like kind of just basic positioning thing, okay? It's not as important if I'm way out or out of range, but the second we start getting kind of close, these are differences that make, or these are elements that make a big difference. If my hand is just relaxed out here and he grabs me, I have less time to react to that than if, let's say, you let go, who's back here, and he has to reach all the way out here to make that happen, okay? My first natural thing is going to be to not let him grab, okay? Number one, um, I want you guys to think about grips as, imagine, like, the second someone reaches out for a grip, it's like you press the button, and the amount of tension that grip has is now increasing. Every second, okay, it's building pressure. If he grabs, uh, let's say you grab my collar with your left hand. If he grabs my collar with my left hand, it's stupid easy to break right away. But if he grabs my collar with his left hand and I let him get that grip, now it's like, okay, now i got to work for this thing. The time that I'm taking to break that grip, you might be thinking about transitioning, so on and so forth. So my first and most simple approach is going to be, uh, let's say you had your right foot forward in the same time, is in really slow reaching out. Is as he reaches out. Parry to the inside. Same thing as boxing. You never want to parry to the outside because in boxing, they'll punch you in the face. Uh, in jiu-jitsu, they're going to grab a hold of you. So I always want to parry, say you reach to the right hand, to the inside. Same thing with the left hand. Parry to the inside. Also good to you to you know, combine that with footwork, right? If he, he throws his right hand to grab my collar, right? I can step out to get a different angle, right? Finally, again, we get into our uh, grip breaking ideas. He grabs a hold of me, so I immediately am disengaging and breaking that grip. That doesn't mean we want to spend our entire fight being defensive and uh, 
reactive to what they're doing, but what it means is we want to be elusive and hard to grab a hold of. Okay? Sorry, there it is. Yeah, sorry if you watch the video. It's going to happen in a minute. I'm telling you. Um, so the final thing we're going to add in before we get in, uh, we'll take, we're basically we're going to break for technique and then I'm going to show you like, what we're going to utilize this for is we're going to talk about getting our grip, okay? Now, most people, when they uh, have trouble getting this collar grip, which is the one we're going to lead with, we don't want to lead with a sleeve grip because this grip sucks alone, right? Uh, most people where they get this grip messed up is by doing two particular things. Two particular things. One is they're going to reach straight in. Uh, Mike, I want you to slap my hand away. Okay, I'm going to get to this. One. All right. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> For real. Ah, right. If I reach straight at this dude's collar, like he's going to parry it away. Number two, and this is like uh, the worst, is they is a lot of people they'll reach out and they're like reaching out to grab. Okay. Now, unless your intention is to do like a five finger exploding heart punch onto your opponent, which I think is banned in most tournaments, uh, like reaching out to poke your opponent is either, it, at best, it's insulting. Right? Like, yeah, I'll show you. Right? I don't want to reach out with my finger. And I don't want to reach straight out because he's going to slap it away. So, either, so you'll say, you'll see like a lot of people that get, now I say this with my fingers all taped up, but a lot of reasons, like times people get their fingers messed up in a stand up exchange is they're reaching out for that collar and he carries my hand away, boom, and then my fingers get all fucked up. So don't get your fingers all messed up if you don't have to, right? So instead, what I'm going to do, I have my, you know, again, freeze, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm going to circle to the side of the collar I want. So in this case, I want his left collar. So I want to circle, let me circle you. This is, a, this is where I'm going to I know you can. I'm going to circle to the outside. I want to get this angle. If possible, I'm going to get this collar grip, not by reaching straight out because his hands are going to be in a reasonably protective position. He's going to parry it away. I want to grab, get my hand to that collar like I'm throwing an overhand right, like in boxing. So if his hands are up, he's protecting himself from the, the sleeve grab or collar grab. I want to come over top and I want to kind of monkey paw him in the chest. When I get this grip, I kind of like hit him, hit a person. I'm not going to lie to you. I basically just punch somebody in the chest. I've only killed three people. Um, so, kind of monkey paw in the chest, and then I don't want to worry about getting the grip right away necessarily. Like, I don't need to reach out again with my fingers. I'm going to get my fingers all cramped up if I do that. I want to grab it, thumb, and connect. So, I'll show that again. Over the top, feed, and catch. I can cinch that grip up once I have a hold of it, right? I don't need to get it right. I don't need to be. Here. This is going to be harder to beat than if I make contact and then grab a hold of it. Okay? So, all of that yapping to get to the point of we're here. I have my hips behind my shoulders. I have posture. Okay? My hands are in a good, like, hard to grab a hold of position. I'm not crossing my feet. And my goal is to get to the outside of his left hand. I'm going to throw like an overhand right to the chest, catch the lapel, turn my elbow down. Because I'm, yes! Got it. Boom. Boom. Does that make sense, guys? Can you see any of Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, Danny, can you hear me? Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So we're here. So again, on the outside, so looking up on the outside. Hips behind shoulders, good posture, so I'm not clenched down. Elbows in tight, hands close to my body. Just the simple premise that if I, my hands are out here, he goes around my sleeve, try to pull it away. All right, no, I'm not going to let you do it this time, Danny. Right? Like, like my timing's out, even though, although I kind of got it away, like how close, right? So I'm here, reach for that sleeve. Right? Like, I can react. I have so much more time to react to that, even if we're close. Anyway, I'm circling to the his left side. In this, and again, if your left foot's forward, you'd be circling to the right side. But I want to circle to the side of the little pelican. Get. I'm going to kind of overhand right like a monkey paw. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this sort of leopard fist. I don't know. Go over the top. I don't want to go straight through, because go ahead and block the hand. He's going to block it. But it's here. Boom. Catch. Does that make sense, guys? Excellent. Let's go ahead and partner up. Um, I'll get Mike, why don't you circle with these, just these two guys. Good. Okay. Uh, work it out, and then we're going to utilize, we're going to talk about how to use that collar grip to uh, make a person take money. All right, let's go do it. Nice. One, two, three.